hello children today uh, we will start this lecture from new chapter practical chemistry uh, which is the last chapter of your syllabus so first we will discuss identification of gases so gases are classified under three headings the first heading is neutral gases the second heading is acidic gases and the last heading is basic gases okay students so acidic neutral and basic gases so first neutral gases first we will discuss neutral gases okay so neutral gases first is water vapor color of the water vapor colorless odor is odorless litmus test neutral to litmus not test chemical test turns white and hydrous copper sulfate blue so copper sulfate which is white in an hydrous condition when react with water it form hydrous copper sulfate means copper sulfate pentahydrate which is blue in color okay so what happen when copper sulfate and hydrous converted in the form of copper sulfate hydrous so anhydrous white colored copper sulfate get converted in the form of blue color hydrous copper sulfate second test of water vapor turns blue cobalt chloride paper pink so blue cobalt chloride paper which is cocl2 blue in color and some books are having misprint here here should be six molecules of water because hydrous cobalt chloride is carrying six molecules of water per molecule okay so correctify if misprint is given in your book also it should be 6h2o so cocl2 uh, which is uh, an hydrous cobalt chloride blue in color converted in the form of hydrous cobalt chloride means cobalt chloride hexahydrate which is pink in color okay so these two are chemical observations or chemical test for water vapor which is a neutral gas the second gas is hydrogen gas it is a colorless odorless gas neutral to litmus first test for this gas is burning wooden splinter is extinguished in hydrogen means means hydrogen gas is non supporter of burning non supporter of burning next test hydrogen burns with a pale blue flame producing a pop sound so hydrogen is a inflammable gas and which burns with pale blue flame with a pop sound okay so here the equation is given hydrogen plus oxygen is forming water then oxygen gas oxygen is a colorless odorless gas neutral to litmus litmus the first observation it is rekindles to a wooden splinter okay so if you are taking a burning wooden splinter near the gas jar of oxygen then it will start glowing okay absorbed in colorless alkaline colorless alkaline paragallol solution which turns brown so color of colorless alkaline paragallol solution turns brown when oxygen is passed through it 
next gas is acidic gases and the first example is carbon dioxide a uh, very common uh, gas color is colorless odor odorless moist blue litmus turns faint red means co2 is acidic in nature but weak acidic in nature comparatively test for the gas the first point burning wooden splinter is extinguished in carbon dioxide means co2 is non supporter of burning on passes through lime water it turns lime water milky so how lime water turns milky due to the formation of calcium carbonate which is a white ppt and insoluble in water okay so when in slag lime or lime water co2 is passed then calcium carbonate is formed which is white in color and due to the formation of calcium carbonate the lime water turns milky the milkiness disappears on passage of excess co2 gas so when excess co2 gas is passed through a uh, milky lime water then calcium carbonate get converted in the form of calcium bicarbonate which is a soluble salt and that is why milkiness of lime water also disappears okay so calcium carbonate get converted in the form of calcium bicarbonate okay so what is the observation observation is that when co2 is passed through lime water the lime water turns milky and passage of excess amount of co2 lime water again turns colorless due to the formation of calcium bicarbonate which is a soluble salt then last line uh, which is very important the gas has no effect on acidified kemonophore or k2cr2o7 solution next point sulfur dioxide colorless and suffocating odor gas litmus test moist blue litmus turns red test of the gas burning wooden splinter is extinguished means so2 is also a non supporter of burning then second point on passes through lime water it turns lime water milky so same observation as we have are uh, seen in the case of co2 gas okay milky but here milkiness of lime water is due to the formation of calcium sulfite which is white in color and also insoluble in water so calcium sulfite will form when we will pass so2 gas in lime water so that is why lime water turns milky but the milkiness disappears on passage of excess sulfur dioxide so on passing excess so2 the milkiness of caso3 will uh, disappear why because calcium bisulfite is formed which is soluble in nature so the same observation as we can see in the case of co2 here also but the salts which are formed here are different from the case of co2 gas these two tests are there with the help of which we can distinguish between co2 and so2 okay so uh, co2 and so2 two gases can be distinguished with the help of these two observations so according to the first observation so2 turns acidified potassium permanganate from pink to clear colorless okay so when kemono4 through kemono4 so2 gas is passed then mnso4 is formed which is a colorless substance so kemono4 is get converted in the form of mnso4 which is colorless okay so kemono4 from pink to clear colorless clear colorless and again a potassium dichromate from orange to clear a green clear a green okay so potassium dichromate converted in the form of clear green 
when SO2 is passed through potassium dichromate solution in the presence of acid. Okay, so these two observation, uh, which with the help of which you can distinguish SO2 from CO2 gas. The next acidic gas is chlorine. Chlorine is greenish yellow gas, pungent odor, moist blue litmus turns red and then gets bleached. Test of the CO2. Turns moist blue litmus red and then bleaches it. So Cl2 is get oxidized. CO2 is converted in the form of hypochlorous acid and which is a unstable acid and this unstable acid is producing nascent oxygen and due to this uh, uh, nascent oxygen Cl2 is bleaching the color of the litmus paper. Next point turns moist starch iodide paper blue black so, so starch iodide paper starch iodide starch iodide paper turns blue black in color okay and when cl2 is reacted with potassium iodide this potassium iodide get oxidized in the form of iodine which is violet vapors so iodine which is formed here is violet vapors violet vapors are formed and in the presence of cl2 gas starch iodide paper get converted in the form of blue black color the next point hydrogen chloride hydrogen chloride so in this reaction here first Cl2 is passed through potassium iodide so this is oxidized in the form of iodine this iodine is violet vapor and this iodine reacts with starch forming starch iodide paper and which gets changed in the form of blue black color so overall overall starch iodide paper converted in the form of blue black color in the presence of chlorine gas then hydrogen chloride HCl gas it is a colorless pungent odor gas gives dense white films when a glass rod dipped in ammonia solution is brought near hydrochloric acid vapors so very common and popular test of ammonia gas and also for HCl vapors. So HCl vapors with ammonia gas or ammonia gas with HCl vapors forming dense white fumes of ammonium chloride. Second point forms a curdy white precipitate on passage through silver nitrate solution. So curdy white not only white it should be curdy white so when HCl gas is passed through silver nitrate solution aqueous solution it get converted in the form of curdy white ppt of silver chloride plus HNO3 okay this curdy white ppt is soluble in ammonium hydroxide but insoluble in dilute HNO3 so further you can test this white PPT with the help of ammonium hydroxide and nitric acid. Next gas is hydrogen sulphide. Colorless rotten egg ordered gas. Moist blue litmus turns red. First point turns acidified potassium permanganate from pink to colorless. So this test and this test of H2S is showing resemblance with the test of sulfur dioxide gas, SO2 gas. Okay, so H2S in acidified chemino 4 
converting pink camino four in the form of colorless substance. Okay, so from camino four from pink is changes to colorless and turns acidified potassium dichromate from orange to green. So this is orange in color and this is green in color. Orange to green. Okay, students. So the notable point is given here. The above tests are answered only by sulfur dioxide, but in case of H two S, yellow particles of sulfur are seen. You can see here. Sulfur is also formed here, and the solution is hence not clear colorless or clear green respectively. So due to the formation of sulfur particles, which are yellowish. Particle, yellow colored particle. So uh, these particles are also formed. That is why the color of the solution is not clear, clear green or clear colorless. Okay. So clear colorless. This term we are using clear colorless in the case of SO two clear colorless and clear green. Okay, because uh, in the test of SO two, sulfur is not formed. Sulfur is absent, but in the case of H two S, sulfur is formed. So sulfur are uh, yellow particles. So due to the formation of these particles or due to the presence of these particles, the color of the these this solution will not be clear. Okay, so pink. Two colorless, not clear colorless in the case of H two S, and and orange to green, not orange to clear green, because orange to clear green in the case of S O two. Okay, so this so this is the difference in the testing of H two S gas and S O two gas, and about uh, rest of the part of the reaction is in the case of S O two and H two S is same. The next turns moist lead acetate paper silvery black. Very important test. Silvery black or shiny black. So lead acetate paper, which is colorless, when passed when H uh, when H two S gas passed through uh, this lead acetate paper, it turns black, silvery black or shiny black due to the formation of lead sulfide. Next is nitrogen dioxide. So it is a reddish brown and irritating odor gas. Very important gas. Okay. So moist blue litmus turns red. Acidic gas. It liberates iodine, which are violet vapors from potassium iodide solution. So when NO two is reacted with potassium iodide solution, vapors of iodine uh, are formed, which are Violet in color, and potassium iodide paper turns brown. The next is it dissolves in cold water to give a mixture of nitrous and nitric acid in solution, which acts as blue litmus and turns it red. Okay, so aqua solution of NO two is acidic in nature. And two different acids, HNO two and HNO three, are formed here. Uh, one point is given here in the last. Hence, NO two is called a mixed acid anhydride. Okay, because NO two with water is forming two different acids, so that is why NO two is the anhydride of this acid also, and for this acid also. So it is known as mixed acid anhydride. Okay students thank you